everybody. Keith K here with our next episode in the Dawn of Man playthrough. And where we left our uh, village was, um, uh, you know, a little more than halfway through the Paleolithic era on our way to the Mesolithic. Um, and we've got three technologies left to unlock to get there. Uh, plus, you have to get the 15 points to, to unlock pottery, which unlocks the whole era. So we're going to work through these at least today um, in this episode, and we might get into the Mesolithic. We'll just have to see how far we get. So we actually right now we have nine knowledge, so we can unlock one. Um, one uh, thing that we could look at is dogs. Right now we have a few dogs in the camp, um, but they won't help us on the hunt. So if we unlock uh, dog training, that they will help us when we're hunting. Um, it's also important for all the other domestication uh, technologies later in the Neolithic period that we're going to want. We also have the option to uh, unlock sling making, which will allow some of our villagers to use a ranged weapon in the form of a sling, which can be handy in the hunt. Um, and we can also unlock funerary rituals, which I think is what we'll do right now. So this, um, this will allow us to unlock spirituality later, but also create a burial mound now. And, <clears throat> um, you know, just as it was for ancient humans in this game, um, some form of funerary is important for our villagers' um, morale and, uh, I guess, mental health, <laughs> if you will. So let's take a look at what this looks like. It's here under the funerary men uh, menu. And there's three that we'll look at over the course of the uh, series. First is the burial mound, the dol dolmen, and the cairn. So the burial mound is pretty straightforward. Um, you don't need too many resources, as you can see there. Just some dried skin, some rocks, and a bone. Uh, and it looks like we've got all of that. So we're going to put this up. We'll put this up by um, our skull totem there. Or, or skull pole, I should say. Let's see. It's kind of hard to tell which way is front. That's front. Okay, you have to zoom in sometimes. Um, I usually like to have these together, but it may not let me place it up here. All right, so let's take a look around. Maybe somewhere over here. Don't really want it too far from the village. To be honest. Yeah, there's a little hill here. I guess we'll put it here. It's not too far. Now, as your village gets bigger, you might need to allow room for multiple of these. So let's put this here, rotate it towards the village, and we'll see them build it. <clears throat> I'll crank the speed up a little bit here. And what'll happen with this is as uh, villagers die, the other villagers will carry them to, um, we unlocked another uh, milestone, which is cool. Um, we'll just take a look at that. So it's our second milestone. Uh, and these don't really do anything in game as far as I've been able to tell, but they will allow you to play in hardcore mode once you unlock a certain number of them. Um, some of the other other challenges, I believe, uh, are unlocked with that as well. So here is our burial mound, and what we see here is the body capacity. So it can fit up to three dead villagers. They'll actually bring them up here, bury them, quote unquote, and then they can come and pay their respects to them later. And um, this will then they'll slowly decay, and you'll have more capacity over time. Um, if you don't have enough capacity as your villagers start to die off, uh, they'll leave the bodies lying around, um, which is definitely not good. Um, let's see, so we just had three more, oh, sorry, we had uh, population 15, so we got uh, quite a bit more knowledge there, and a new human. We're still doing okay on capacity, so I'm going to leave this alone, but let's see what we can unlock, unlock next. I'm going to go with the dog training. Uh, the ranged weapons are good if there's some sort of an attack, but, you know, we can just, I think, um, overwhelm them with numbers. 
this early in the game, I would be surprised if we were getting uh, a significant number of uh, uh, raiders at all. And, um, you know, cave lion and hyena attacks shouldn't be too worrisome. Um, let's see, how are we doing? We're doing okay on food, but you can never have enough, honestly. I want to just take a quick peek at what... And you can see here we've collected all the wood. This is one thing you will have to deal with in terms of management, resource management. So we want to decide, you know, this is kind of a nice natural shelter here, right? This, these, they form sort of a natural shelter. Um, it might make sense to actually keep clearing out in this direction. We might have to move our hunting grounds and our tannin collection uh, if we do that. Um, or we could expand in this direction. So I think we'll, um, I think for now, I'm just gonna move this here. And then what'll happen is your resources may not get replenished the way you want them to. So you do have to keep an eye on that. When all those trees are gone, <clears throat> you might need to move this just like with rocks or flint. Right, the plants will grow back, but the trees, um, you'll get a cleared out area like this that you can then you can build buildings on, you can build farms on in the future. Um, and over time, trees will grow back. For now, I wanna keep our hunting area uh, pretty close to us. But as our population is going up, I think we need another hunting ground. And this across the river is a nice little spot. Um, so let's go ahead and place a work area here for hunting. And of course you can continue to do this manually, right? As you see your um, food stores go down, you can kind of look around. You don't want to send your humans too far out. Oh, there's a nice little watering hole here. This will attract lots of animals. So this could also be a nice little hunting ground as well. Uh, I don't think it's unreal reasonable to place it here let's see yeah so that gives us three hunting grounds and I think over time you know we could decide to clear this out this actually would be a nice little area for farming but um, we'll leave it this way for a little bit longer so those are most of the changes I wanted to make and you'll see let's see do we have a hunter going out yeah, you see the dogs are now going with the hunters as they go to hunting grounds. We'll see them in action here. Sounds like the bear's got something. That is something to check too, uh, where you know you have natural predators, you can, let me get away. Uh, you can sometimes scavenge corpses of animals that have been killed uh, through natural predation. Usually the predator will eat them and you won't have that opportunity. But let's take a look. Oh, that might have just been two bears fighting. Oh, there's cave hyenas here too. Here we go. There's a dead cave lion that's interesting um, we can try to scavenge that there's a lot of predators here so we're gonna need to be careful um, but they may just leave us alone so we'll see and then we have the hunters coming back with their resources from the kill we'll speed things up here And this is one of the criticisms of the game. I, I actually really enjoy this game, but um, I have seen a number of people uh, comment online that the game can get really boring. And, you know, I think the, my experience of that is simply that there are periods of time where you crank this up to high speed and just have to let it go for an extended period um, while you wait to get to the next level. So that can be a little annoying. It's a dog, okay, I thought we might have a cave lion approaching us. All right, so our last, tech here uh, is sling making. 
It's not going to do a lot for us. We'll go ahead and unlock it. We're really waiting for the 15 points to get to pottery. Um, but let's go check the crafter here. And we'll put the sling on repeat. So that uses uh, just the dried skins. We've got a fair number of dry skins running. Oh, I'm sorry, available. And we've got our two dryers, uh, skin dryers here. As the population goes up, we'll have to keep an eye on it. We may need to go to a third. Uh, one of the things I find um, is that you'll end up making a lot more leather uh, than you really need. And I don't like to have to turn this off. So again, that's where you want to take advantage of limits. Um, and just keep an eye on this. This has got a 20, you know, a one-to-one -one ratio. I might actually lower the leather a little bit. Um, just to make sure we have plenty of dry skins because you need dry skins a lot more than you need leather uh, and then let's just jump down to slings 50 percent of the adult population seems reasonable we'll leave that there for now uh, the rest of these limits look fine so uh, now we really need to wait for a while we've got to get to 15 so we're going to crank this up and while it's running uh, barring an attack. There are a couple other things I wanted to cover here really quick, and that's these displays up here. So this one we've referred to a bunch. This is our key resources. It's not all of our resources. You can always look at that here, um, and you can see there's a lot more resources to come, uh, and then different sort of quality of tools. Uh, you can see that underneath. So <clears throat> The spear as a category, we have 12, but that's six bone spears and six flint spears. Same thing uh, with our knives. They get broken down into various um, levels, right? Skins, outfits, or I should say qualities. Uh, uh, as far as outfits go, each one will have its own, um, its own up here. So let's deal with this attack. Let's see where this is. So can we get people to him fast enough? Who is this? So we could put the villagers on alert. That's a boy. But they may not get there to help him in time. So I'm going to click on this guy and then double click on the hyena. That should get him to run to it. Boy. Um, he was attacking the main village. Then we would definitely want to put them on alert, but he's not moving very fast. Well, and he won anyway, so let's see how bad his health was. So not terrible. A single animal like that, we can just let it play out. Um, you will see later on, you know, that there will be attacks. Like this area here has a lot of predators because there's a lot of game. As your hunting areas get further out, sometimes you have to just deal with it with the people that you have on hand. It's not worth spinning your whole village up because you won't be able to get them there in time. Um, so as I was saying, uh, there are other menus here. Um, so this is our kind of key resource panel. I always like to add um, our transports. Keep an eye on our transports. And as we start to domesticate animals, keep this up so I can see how many animals we have. There are a few other options here. Um, you know, kind of this general view. We've already got that up, so we don't need it. Uh, full res or this resource panel here. Limits, I believe. Oh, grouped resources. So this just breaks it down. If this view looks too cluttered, you can look at them. You know, this, these are food, these are resources. Then you have tools, and then you'll have, right now all we have skins, but you'll see leather outfit and linens and cotton as we go along. Um, speed, I prefer just to use the hotkeys. The defense, so that one will actually add over here. You have another set here. We'll add this one here, although hitting F6 is generally a little bit faster. Food chart, which I don't find all that useful, but it shows you kind of, you know, here's your baseline of survival. Uh, we're actually generating a surplus right now. Hay, which is food for animals. Uh, it will come into play later. 
and then the workload chart. Um, but we can just keep an eye on that here. Because I really like to have the animals up. So we won't need these just yet, but I'll leave them up so that uh, we can refer to them later on as a uh, case may be. We have a lot of unhappy folks here. We might need to invest in some more spirituality. We've got our one skull pole here. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm trying to wait on the totem, put that here, but I'll put another skull pole up nearby the, the burial mound. They, they seem to go together. See if that helps. I don't know if other people are just maybe tired also. Um, the workload's not too bad, so that shouldn't be the case. All right, and this is what I was talking about. So we've got four knowledge, we've got to get to 15. Um, the village is kind of humming along nicely. We've got food production going well. I suppose we could add a tent. Let me think about how I want this to lay out um, later on. Let's see if he has anything of interest here. What would we be willing to sell, actually? Well, I've got six slings already, and those are pretty valuable. Um, we'll just sell one of them because it's pretty easy to replenish. We don't have a lot of spears. Um, we aren't doing a lot of wood chopping, so we could... 15, let's see if we can even use up that much. Pulses we're not ready for. Let's get some dried skins, I guess, because that is something can never have enough of, really. Mm. I'd rather go one th more skin and then find... Maybe a bone. Let's take that out and go... Here, we'll just give some bones. We have quite a few of them. That's not really a necessary trade. Um, later in the game, when you kind of have your production firing on all cylinders, if you will, um, you can even just skip on the trader once in a while. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is your camera actually um, is lined up with the terrain features. And uh, so if you're trying to get a view of something from a distance, you actually may want to go up a terrain feature that's high and then you can spin around like we can look down here. You can't get this high just by uh, using the mouse wheel, right? If I'm down at this level, that's as high as I can get. But if I go up the terrain feature, eh, I don't know, not that big of a deal, but could be something useful. What do we got with this guy here? He's unhappy. Let's see what's going on with him. Oh, he's going to go take care of it. One other feature that I thought I would uh, point out that's um, not really part of gameplay, but it's interesting enough. If you select on something, uh, a villager, an animal, um, I mean, even the tent has this, you'll see this little camera icon, and you'll basically zoom in on them. You can still rotate. She went in here and see what they're doing. I'm not sure what the devs intended with this. Um, you know, it's clever, it's neat, but it's not that helpful in gameplay. Um, let's go ahead and put up another tent. So one of the things I've done here is I've made this somewhat of a semicircle, which will be a problem later on um, if we want to create nice even rows of housing, but uh, that's not even necessary either. And you can always clean that up later. So let's just throw another tent up. We have plenty of capacity, but we want to attract more people. It doesn't hurt to have a ton of excess capacity that um, they can step into. Now, one thing you do want to just watch is if you're close, build. don't build in the fall like I just did. Uh, we, we have plenty of room, so it's probably not as much of an issue, but... Um, you don't want folks left out 
in the cold if, if the winter sneaks up on you. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this run and we'll come back when there's something interesting to talk about. This is, and this is what I was saying earlier. We've got quite a bit of time to go. Oh, and sure enough, um, we have our first villager passing away. So there is a little help that will pop up. Uh, that talks about it, how the morale of some of the people will go down when someone dies. And then in order to help them recover, where is he? In order to help them recover, where you go? They want to, they're going to want to bury him. Well, I don't know if you all see him, but I don't see where he is. So we're just going to hang out by this burial mound. And I'll come back when uh, somebody shows up carrying him. Okay, here we go. So you can see here, this villager has gone ahead and grabbed the deceased man. So here's the adult man carrying the deceased man, Nokal. And they're going to bury him here in this burial mound. And <clears throat> you can see his morale has gone down a bit, so it's probably a relative. Uh, but by burying him and being able to pay respects, the morale can be brought back up. So you've got to address both the spiritual needs and the funeral needs of your uh, of your village to keep your, your folks happy. Now, it's not much of a burial. burial. He just disappears. But now you can see that the capacity is two instead of three. And as I said earlier, this will slowly degrade um, as the bodies decompose the camera view. There's not much really to say about this. Uh, it's a neat feature, but all right. So we'll be back. All right, we've got another, another cave hyena attack. This time looks like they may be coming directly to the village. So we're going to go ahead and put our alert on. This will call everybody to the center of town, the alert location. Later, <clears throat> you're able to move that around. They'll run to their tents. If they don't have a spear, they'll arm themselves and wait for the attack. And then once it's initiated, they'll deal with it. Now, you could multi-select everybody and have them attack ahead of time. That's usually what I do. I just wanted you to see the normal behavior. <clears throat> um, and then, of course, they'll gather the resources. Uh, I don't think I finished what I was saying. You multi-select everybody and then click on the hyenas as they get closer, the raiders. Um, the raiders are more interesting because they will stop and destroy outbuildings. So if everybody hangs out here and doesn't do anything, um, they could start to destroy some of your structures. But uh, I'll show you that in a little more depth when, um, when we see our first village raid. Our, our first raiders come and raid the village. Let's see, winter is coming. We've got quite a bit of meat, so I'm not gonna send more people out on the hunt. That's actually pretty good. Yep, all right. Um, yeah, our fishing this is a little bit of a pain in the butt, kind of constantly moving these back and forth to replenish uh, stocks. You could put down multiple work areas too, and then the villagers will just shift. That's probably um, a smarter thing to do. So I'll just put another one here and let them manage that. All right, and um, you can see that we're at eight of 15. All right, we've gone through the winter, the spring, and the most part of the summer, as you can see. Uh, and we just got a bunch of points that put us over 15, and that was um, this milestone being unlocked around knowledge and uh, new settlers uh, arriving, which uh, upped our population and gave us uh, some additional knowledge points. So here, uh, expansion, this is probably based on population, is my guess. Gives you a little kind of snapshot of vignette there. Uh, and then you can see I just got this no storage slots left. So I've gone ahead and built another storage tent. 
Um, and while the game was kind of running, uh, I reorganized our village a little bit. I'm shifting some of the storage behind the storage tent. I think eventually I will move uh, at least the dryers and the, um, the tanner over here as well uh, to make room for um, basically like a little uh, commercial district where our craftsmen will be, our trades will be, because uh, we'll be able to add a cheesemaker, we'll be able to add um, folks that can make clothing. And then I also uh, reorganized our housing a little bit. Um, the way I usually do this is your houses will be set to uh, uh, auto fix and none of them are due to be fixed. I'll show you this when uh, when we see one that is needing of repair but they're usually set to auto repair. You can turn that off and then you basically recycle them uh, when they start to need repair and build another house in a different location. So I start the new hut first and then we'll um, once that's just about finished, I'll have them tear down the old one just so that we don't hurt our capacity. So now that we've got more than 15 uh, and actually hitting hitting 15, we went quite a bit over, uh, we can unlock pottery, right? So there's a big amount of uh, knowledge points needed. And then we go, you know, we drop down to seven. Uh, so these were all five to unlock. These will be seven, and there's some really good ones in here. You know, we'll be able to improve our tools. We'll be able to mine underground. Um, we'll be able to store water, and, and uh, this will also later unlock well digging. We can unlock some archery, and the first uh, of our grains um, technologies first will allow us just to gather and process wild grains into bread, uh, into flour, which we can use for bread, and later we'll be able to domesticate those. Um, some sledge making, which allows us to move things around a little bit faster. And then uh, the next level of spirituality, which is uh, the totem I'm, I'm uh, interested in building. I've kind of saved a spot here in the center of town. Um, where we can put a totem that's not so creepy as a, uh, uh, a skull pole. So this talks a little bit about the different types of transportation, you know, as you unlock different levels uh, of knowledge, of technology, it'll tell you a little bit about it um, and what it's used for. We've got another milestone, looks like. Humble beginnings. And now that we're in the Mesolithic, I think maybe we'll stop it here. Um, and we'll pick this back up as we explore the technologies in Mesolithic and work towards uh, advancing to the Neolithic. There aren't quite as many in this stage as some of the later stages, although they're fairly even. This is the Neolithic is probably the busiest, um, but there are some good things to show here as well. So as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, Please do give the video a like, uh, consider subscribing so that you could get notified of future uh, episodes in Dawn of Man playthrough. And um, if you have any questions or uh, advice for other players, please uh, drop a comment down below. I do appreciate those and read them all. And as always, thanks for watching. See you back here soon.